Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Three Fates Decide. My name is Sam, and I am here with my two co-hosts, Liz and Mary. Say hello, ladies. Hello. Hello. And for this episode, we are going to be kind of summarizing, going through, telling our thoughts on one of uh, HBO's more recent hits this past year, uh, The Last of Us. And uh, I'm just going to say this now, there might and most likely will be some spoilers, so if you have not watched the series and plan on to at some point... And just haven't gotten to it yet, which is crazy because it came out a couple months ago. But anyway, if you haven't, stop here and uh, and wait till you watch it and then come back. If you've watched it or you don't care, continue listening. You think you know what we're going to talk about. And welcome back to Three Fates Decide. It just sounds more dramatic that way. All right, so this week we are going to be talking about... But just when you least expect it, we changed the game. One Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. I mean, we always celebrated Easter. You're part of the Half-Blood Prince. So we're going to do another free talk, freestyle thing, no planned discussion. At the end of the day, only one thing matters. We decide. We're going to hit the, the, the main highlight. That is the thing that we were saying back in that episode. A quick recap. Three Fates Decide podcast. <laughs> yep. So, spoiler <laughs> alert. That's all I'm going to say. Real quick on uh, the, the you know, summary of the show. I believe I already said it was on HBO. Uh, it mm-hmm. was uh, created by Craig Mazin and Neil Druckmann. It is based on a video game called The Last of Us by Naughty Dog. Um, and it yes. stars Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. there you go. And basically the yeah. quick synopsis of the whole thing, it's an American post um oh my God, I can't say the word. I can say it, but I can't say it. Post apocalyptic. Ooh. There you go. It was not wanting to come out. Uh, (laughs) Post-apocalyptic drama uh, television series. It's based on the 2013 video game, as I mentioned, and it's set 20 years after a pandemic caused by a mass fungal infection, which causes its host to transform into zombie-like creatures and collapses society. The series follows Joel, who's played by Pedro Pascal, a smuggler tasked with escorting the immune teenager Ellie, played by Bella Ramsey, across the post apocalyptic. Uh, oh my God, I lost it again. Apocalyptic. Post- I can't. Whatever. Across the U.S. There you go. Done. <laughs> Apparently, I can't speak today. Oh. Okay. Now, as everyone knows, I'm the gamer of the group here. I have played the game. It has been several years since I've played the game. Obviously. Um, so I haven't played the game recently, so, but I was really excited to watch the TV series. So I, I watched it all the way through when it first came out and they did really, I think they did really well in sticking with the storyline of the game, but there were some things that they, um, they kind of, uh, expanded on which i really really liked and we'll get to that when we get to one of the to a at least one of the episodes i know there's pro- there's probably others um i can't say that i'm a expert on either game or the show uh because it's been so long since i've played the game i do think they did a really good job in keeping it fairly um close to the source material which was really nice to see I mean, you think about it, they had it all laid out for them. So they kind of just had to fill in the gaps. Right. Well, the nice thing of it is, is that um, Neil Druckmann actually worked on the game itself. Oh, nice. Okay. That that makes sense. Yeah. So that was really nice to have. Yeah. So it was really nice to have Neil Druckmann come in and be a creator of the show because he was able to really kind of keep it close to that source material and but still allow HBO obviously to expand upon and 
um, expand the world out even more than the game did itself, which was really nice. You know, and really expand out on flesh out the, some of the characters that didn't really get fleshed out in the game because they were like just minor characters. They were side characters. So they weren't really important to the game, but it was kind of nice to see them get some not so much loving, but just some attention and flesh and being fleshed out in the in the show, which was really nice. Yeah, I mean, as somebody who has not played the game at all. Um, overall, I, I thought it was really an interesting concept, um, even though it is like the premise of the show is, of course, you know, a zombie apocalypse, you know, pandemic situation. I thought it was kind of interesting that the route they went with was a fungal um, infection, which is pretty different because you rarely ever hear about fungi as being a threat um which made it interesting and as i recall reading um the premise was actually uh inspired by i think neil um i think it was neil Druckmann. he had seen um an episode of like i think planet earth or something and they included in one of the episodes um the the interesting fact that there is actually a type of fungus that does intentionally attack ants and other types of insects and that became the inspiration for this fungal uh induced zombie apocalypse and they even basically use the same fungi um yeah i was gonna say cordyceps is is a real fungus and it does it it does attack um certain species of of, uh insects yeah and it it is really interesting because of how popular the show was um it was airing that there were quite a few articles from different, you know, entertainment magazines and whatnot, literally interviewing actual mycologists to answer the question that a lot of people in the audience are were probably asking is like, is this actually realistic? And the general consensus by mycologists is that it that hypothetically speaking could fungi evolve um in this direction hypothetically yes but is it very likely no which is very reassuring because and you know for anybody who is familiar with like you know how evolutionary science and you know evolution works it it is actually true that hypothetically they could evolve to start infecting you know, other species than, you know, ants and whatnot. But the reality, though, is that due to how evolution works, it would literally take thousands, if not millions of years for them to eventually do something like change what species of animals it's going to start griefing, like the way it griefs ants. So is it going to happen anytime soon? No. Um But the other interesting thing, like I remember one interview I was reading pointed out that technically speaking, we do deal with fungi infections all the time. I mean, you know, you think about it. Um, If you suffer from dandruff, that is a form of fungal infection that humans deal with. You know, same thing with like ringworm, you know, um, yeast infections. Those are all examples, but, you know. They're more annoyances and, you know, frustrations than anything extremely dangerous. So that's good news. So episode one, when you're lost in the darkness. It starts in 2003. A mass fungal infection of mutated cordyceps sparks a global pandemic. Joel flees with his daughter, Sarah, and brother, Tommy, from their Texas home. Sarah is killed by a soldier. 20 years later... 
Joel, we, we see Joel living in a quarantine zone, a QZ in Boston, managed by the Federal Disaster Response Agency, or FEDRA, working as a smuggler with his partner, Tess. When Tommy fails to contact them from Wyoming, they pay a local dealer, Robert, for a car battery, but he scams them and sells it to the Fireflies, a rebel group opposing FEDRA. Attempting to receive it, Joel and Tess encounter Marlene, the Fireflies' leader, who begs them to take a teenager named Ellie to the Massachusetts State House in exchange for a working truck. While sneaking out of the QZ, the three run into a soldier on the outside. He tests them for infection and reveals Ellie is positive. Joel kills the soldier, and Ellie claims to be immune. Dun, dun, dun. So that's that's the first, yeah, that's the first episode. Now, when the episode opens, that is, probably is one of my favorite favorite scenes, and it's completely new to the show because it starts back in like I think seven in the seventies, if I remember, or maybe sixty eight, nineteen sixty eight. Um, where they're talking about this that a global pandemic could happen with cordyceps or with a with fungal with a fungal infection of some sort. And then it is um and then obviously two thousand three, that's what happens, which I thought was really interesting. The way they the way they uh, kind of let in with that. Put yeah. it out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They they put it out there like, hey, this could happen because of global warming. I thought that was really good. And then uh, it does happen. Obviously, we knew that was going to happen. But still, it was just really well the way they did it. Um, one of the changes that they did make was the uh, when the game was set or when the, when the show was set. Because the game was set, started in 2013, and then it 20 years later was 2033. Now, in the show, it started in 2003 and opens up. And then we, we moved to the present, which is... 2023 so i thought that was really interesting that they kind of make it seem like it's an alternate timeline to our own instead of something that could still happen in the future yeah i'm wondering if they did that because of covid you know like maybe they felt that it was going to be a little too close to home (laughs) maybe i mean it could be and or i just thought the fact that they opened that they filmed it and then they were going to start it in the year 2023 showing it. So I thought maybe that might have been why they changed it to 10 years. You know, they they upped it by 10 years, I guess, you know. Oh, OK. Yeah. You know what? Um, speaking of actually, apparently they intentionally did that because they felt that I'm reading a quote here as. The writers felt the story taking place simultaneously with the show's release was more interesting and real and did not fundamentally change the story, which is actually true. Yeah, it really doesn't. I just thought it was interesting. Yeah. Another thing is we see a lot more of Sarah, which is Joel's daughter, in the in the first episode. Um, whereas in the game, you don't we don't see we don't have that time with her. We. We know she exists, we know she dies, and that's the end of it. And then it's, you know, then we're on to what we're doing. But in the show, we get to see her, we get to actually fall in love with her, some kind of fall in love with her a little bit, because we see who she is as as a human, and how she cares for her dad and her uncle. And then, all of a sudden, she's gone. And it, it really makes you feel... It makes you feel as heartbroken as you know Joel is in the show. In the show, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's more about t- just Tess and Joel's relationship is more obvious in the show than it is in the game. But I mean, it's not. If they hadn't done it, it really wouldn't have made any difference. If they had left it, it was in the game. Either way, I, I mean, I think it would have made. There was no difference into it. Um. Another big one is how the cordyceps infection spread because in the game it's it, it's spread through spores so it's spread 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 through the air whereas in the show it is spread usually by direct contact or through um a like 
being bit or being scratched, you know, somehow getting that into them. So. Right. I mean, to be fair, the game version is a little bit more realistic in terms of like how typically fungi, exactly. you know, exactly. reproduce and spread themselves. Mm -hmm. Which is true. But I mean, like, I I just thought it was a very interesting way of how they brought it down to make it more of a more personal in how it, it spreads instead of just through spores because spores would be hard to see. spores would be kind of hard to do on a show yeah like unless you make them like a colored cloud mist yeah, type of and, thing yeah and that's not realistic right well also to be fair having it through bites and whatnot would fit the zombie trope more yeah um the other big one is uh with tommy uh in the game tommy is just somewhat gone is they just don't like joel and tommy just don't talk in the game that often whereas in the show they're very close and tommy's some basically missing and that is one of the reasons why joel is trying to leave the QZ to go out and find his brother because he's he doesn't know what's what happened to him. So hmm. that was that was another uh change. But it's I mean it, once again it's not a huge strength huge change, but I can but it, it does give more dynamic and depth to the show than what would need to be for the game, which was nice. Yeah. But I do think they did a really good job with the whole thing all together. Yeah. I do think it was really interesting um, bit of casting that they had the same actress who plays Marlene in the game play her in the live action TV show, which I thought was interesting how they did actually fit at least two or three other actors as well from the game into the show that we see in later episodes, which I think is a nice touch for the uh, fans of the game. Who would appreciate that bit of uh well i'm not sure like if easter egg casting is really the right term but you know because at the end of the day these the actors that did the motion capture and the voice over work for the characters in the game they are you know actually actors so it makes sense that if they are available and that there are roles that they could fit in the tv show that they should get a chance to show up on screen episode two is called infected brief synopsis two days before the worldwide outbreak in jakarta indonesia government officials show an infected course to a mycologist who tells them there is no cure or vaccine and advises bombing the entire city to prevent further outbreak in the present ellie explains to joel and tess that she is being transported west in hopes of being used to find a cure Discovering that the path to the state house is swarmed with infected, they cut through a history museum where they are attacked by where they are attacked by blind infected known as clickers, and Ellie is bitten. They arrive at the state house but find the fireflies dead. Tess reveals that she was bitten, while Ellie's bite begins to heal, provide, proving her immunity. Joel shoots an infected, which alerts the swarm to their location. Tess convinces him to escape and take Ellie to their allies in Lincoln, Massachusetts. While she stays behind, blowing up the building and killing herself along with the horde. That was sad. Yeah, that was very sad to see Tess die. I mean, I knew it was happening, but still. <laughs> it's like, damn it. <laughs> just like, I just, like poor Joel. <laughs> like, he just, everyone's dying around him. I know. I know. It's like, he just wants to find somebody to love. He just wants to love somebody and be loved in return. And... It did not happen for the poor man. Nope, it's not like, working oh, out. Lord. It ain't. Poor man. So the opening of the second episode is obviously uh, stay same with the like, first episode. It's just show specific. There's I'm talking about Jakarta being where the outbreak started because the game never actually says. It never says where the outbreak started and how it started. Um, we know Ellie's Ellie being bitten again that just proves that she's being that she's immune to it uh because 
that's the same as the game, only instead of being bitten in the game, she's inhales the spores. Uh, and Tess's death is obviously um, different between game and show. In the game, she's killed by Fedra soldiers. In the show, she's obviously, she is bitten and then kills, uh, blows up a building. So, I mean, it's a more glorious end for her in the show. Seriously, it's the hero thing. I mean, she went out in a blaze of glory, literally. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. And one of the nice, one of the things that um, it really shows that's that's different was the way how the affected are connected. They're basically connected through to each other through like a fungal um, network. And they can communicate with, they can communicate to each other over long distances through the, through this, this connection that they have to the other infected. It, it was really interesting how they, how they did that. Yeah, that is really interesting. Episode three, long, long time. Joel and Ellie begin to hike to meet with Bill and Frank. Ellie sees evidence of the government's execution of innocents during the early days of the pandemic. Back in 2007, Frank leaves Baltimore and stumbles upon the compound of Bill, a paranoid survivalist who reluctantly takes him in. The men begin a, ro begin a romance, sharing a love of music and food. Years later, Frank contacts Tess by radio and the two groups enter a tenuous friendship. In the present, Frank is terminally ill and asks Bill to assist his suicide after they marry. Bill, not wanting to live without Frank, kills himself as well. When Joel and Ellie arrive, they discover a letter Bill left for Joel. Bill wrote that protecting Frank gave his life meaning and that he has bequeathed all his supplies to Joel and Tess. Unbeknownst to Joel, Ellie takes Frank's pistol. They take Bill's truck and set out to find Tommy. Now, the huge difference here that I really, and I, what I really, really loved was the entire story of Bill and Frank, because you don't see that in the game at all because they're just side they're just background characters side characters but the fact that we see the entire this entire episode is pretty much just about bill and frank and really expanding on their on who they are and their story it was very it was really kind of nice to see them being fleshed out that way it is pretty interesting the concept of doing um a love story in essence in this episode kind of a little unexpected given you know the themes and scenario of the show so but yeah you know, yeah but it, it just adds like some other sides of you know uh a person's life experiences i guess you could say that despite how completely chaotic and upside down everything is there's still some room for people to find connections like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, episode four. Please hold my hand. Traveling through Missouri, Joel and Ellie are forced to take a detour through Kansas City where they are ambushed. Joel kills two of the bandits, but a third overpowers him and nearly chokes him to death before Ellie saves him by shooting the man with Frank's pistol. More bandits find the bodies. Their leader, Kathleen, believes Joel and Ellie might be in contact with a man named Henry and orders a manhunt. Joel counsels Ellie about the firefight and gives her the pistol back. Kathleen, second in command, Perry, thinks he has found Henry's hideout, but something is growing under the building. Kathleen orders it kept secret until they find Henry. Joel and Ellie sleep in a high-rise apartment for the night, hoping they can scout a, w scout a way out of the city in daylight. They awaken to find Henry and his brother, younger brother Sam holding them at gunpoint. Um, and the big thing here is that it takes place in Kansas City instead of Pittsburgh. Yeah. You have the city in the game in the show and Pittsburgh in the game. So Yeah, which is like an interesting choice because logistically speaking, it doesn't really make any sense. Why would you go to Kansas City if you're trying to get to Wyoming? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um apparently it's due to literally the location they were filming and they were filming up in Canada and I guess they felt like um there weren't really any places in the area that would visually make any sense to uh, be a duplicate for Pittsburgh. 
But yeah. apparently it matches Kansas City pretty decently. <laughs> there we go. But uh, one interesting thing I found out was that uh, the second in command is played by um, Jeffrey Pierce, who was Tommy in the game. So another interesting casting decision. Yeah. All right. So that was that um, Kathleen is she's completely new in the uh, TV show because she's not in the game at all. She's an amalgamation of de- several different characters. I mean, that makes sense because, I mean, you're not going to save money. You're not going to have a million more characters just to, you could just combine a bunch of people to one. Exactly. And that's basically what they did. Um, and the fact that Ellie kills. In the game, Ellie kills a, ra- a raider, but in the show, she stabs him, but she doesn't actually kill him. It's Joel that ends up killing him. So that was a big that was a difference that they made. The pit of infected. That's another thing that they made on the that they changed. Is they that's not in the game at all. Is they have this pit of infected pe- creatures that's slowly coming boiling up to the surface that Kathleen and Perry are overlooking. It at one point in the show, and it was really kind of interesting to see that they're actually becoming more hostile instead of just rotting away like they think, like they expected them to. And then we get into episode five, which is Endure and Survive. Henry and Sam make a tentative truce with Joel and Ellie. Joel wants to part ways, but Henry proposes they escape the city together using underground tunnel routes that only Henry knows. Joel hesitantly agrees. Henry confesses to Joel he was responsible for the death of Kathleen's brother, turning him over to Fedra in exchange for medication for Sam's leukemia. Ellie and Sam quickly become friends. After escaping through the tunnels, the group is attacked by a sniper from an upper story window. Joel sneaks up and kills him, but finds out he is radioing Kathleen, who arrives with her militia. Before Kathleen can kill Henry, a horde of infected emerge from underground, including a large bloater that beheads Perry and a child clicker that mauls Kathleen. After the group escapes to a motel, Sam shows Ellie he was bitten on the leg. The next morning, Sam is infected and attacks Ellie. Henry kills him before killing himself. Joel and Ellie bury them and set off on foot, heading west. Now, this this episode... I I ended up crying. I cried. I cried at the end of this episode. Yeah. Yeah. It's it was, such a no, sad that was, it was so sad. Like, I, yeah. Oh, it, it broke my heart because Ellie thought she could save Sam because so she, she tried to give him some of her blood, you know, because she was immune. And she's like, it, she thought it would help him. And, oh. It just broke my heart when she saw him sitting there the next morning and then he turns around and he's infected and he attacks her. And then Henry has to, to save her, he has to kill him. And then he's so shocked by what he can't, but what he did, he, he just, he kills himself. It's just like, oh, it was just heartbreaking. God, I, I cried. Yeah, the the feels I were cried. definitely, you know. Crazy oh, yeah. with that episode. Yeah. I mean, Henry did say that he had never killed anybody before, and then the very first person he ever killed is his own brother. Yeah. I mean, there's a few things that are different. Like, um, there was no infected in the tunnels when they were in the tunnels. Um, in the show, Henry was a Fedra informant, whereas they were just two people trying to survive in the game. The bloater is completely new. I shouldn't say the bloater was new. I mean, he in the game, we see him around Bill. And then he was moved to this part just to show, to show how dangerous they can be. And then, obviously, about Ellie's blood. And the fact that she, tried, she thought she could cure Sam, but she couldn't. That was, that was the big ones there. Episode 6, Kin. Three months after Henry and Sam's death, Joel and Ellie reach a small, thriving community in Jackson, Wyoming, where Joel is reunited with Tommy, whose wife, Maria, is pregnant. Ellie learns about Sarah's fate from Maria. Joel confides in Tommy about Ellie's immunity and his own declining mental state. Joel asks Tommy to take Ellie to the Fireflies, as he is afraid and he cannot he is afraid he cannot keep her safe. Ellie overhears them and confronts Joel, who insists they will part ways. Joel changes his mind changes his mind after remembering Sarah and he and Ellie travel to Colorado on horseback. They find the Fireflies have vacated their base. 
possibly re relocating to a hospital in Utah. Joel and Ellie attempt to escape a group of raiders. When one of them attacks Joel, Joel kills him but is stabbed during the struggle. Joel and Ellie escape the others, but Joel soon collapses and falls off their horse, leaving Ellie unsure how to proceed. Cliffhanger. Yeah, that was a big one. Looking at some of the differences, obviously the opening scene is different than, than the game. Because I guess in the game, Joel and Ellie confront an older couple and like who basically seem like they're perfectly fine, like they don't even realize what's going on in the rest of the world. And then, after, you know, after they persuade them, the couple kind of send Joel and Ellie in the right direction before warning them of a mysterious danger across the river. Expanding in, you know, with the game, just a bit more of the scene also plays into Joel's paranoia that Tommy is not doing very well. But paranoia is not, you know, really different from the game, but it's more pronounced in, in the show. Tommy and Maria's baby. I mean, it really, it, that's kind of the same in both the game and the show that they discover that Tommy's actually living really well and he's doing well for himself, which kind of shows that Joel is, is being, um, Joel, I think Joel really feels like he's being replaced because Tommy no longer needs him because Tommy left, didn't tell anybody that he was going to stay in Jackson, Wyoming and get married and have, you know, didn't call for, didn't send them any information about it. And I think he kind of feels left behind in a way. Which I get. I mean, also, I mean, you have a freaking, like, you know, zombie apocalypse thing going on down there. You don't let your brother know that you're okay. Like, right? <laughs> I'm like, I mean, he could have sent a message and be like, dude, I'm fine. I'm out here. I got married. I'm having a yeah. baby. Come, come join right. me. Like, my life's great. You should come out here. Yeah. You and Tess, come join us. No, he's just like, I'm going to go to Wyoming. Yeah, I'll talk to you when I get back. Never come back. It's like, Tommy, really, dude? Really? Come on now. Selfish. Yes. Tommy was very selfish. Um, and we do see. Uh, Joel starts having panic attacks in the show, which you don't really see in the game. And it just kind of shows because Joel is panicking over the fact that he doesn't feel like he can protect Ellie because he couldn't protect Sarah. He couldn't protect Tess. He he feels like he's letting everybody else down. I think that's an interesting decision to really explore that because, I mean, it's a very real human reaction to what's been, happened. Yeah. And then his um breakdown and then Joel having a breakdown when Tommy talking to Tommy. It really cuz he asked Tommy to escort Ellie the rest of the way and not himself cuz he doesn't think he can do it. So he basically begged Tommy to take her. But then that kind of gets changed because you know, obviously Ellie is like, "Uh-uh, I heard this. You're not we're we're come on, you're coming with me. I need you with me, not Tom, not Tommy." But quite the setup for the next episode. Yes. Or rather the next two episodes. Right. All right. Episode seven. We're, we're three episodes. Two episodes left after this. Episode seven is left behind. Ellie and an injured Joel shelter in an abandoned house. As Joel approaches death, he urges Ellie to leave him. Ellie remembers her time in Fedra Military School, which she attended with her best friend Riley. While Ellie causes trouble and fights with her peers, Riley ran away and has been missing for three weeks. Riley sneaks back into their dorm room and reveals to Ellie she has joined the Fireflies. She brings Ellie to an abandoned mall where they explore a photo booth, an arcade, and a carousel. Riley tells Ellie the Fireflies have assigned her to a post in Atlanta, and it is her last night in Boston. Ellie is upset, but convinces Riley to stay, and they kiss. An infected attacks the two, and Ellie kills it, but both are bitten during the struggle. Carefully, they decide to stay together and wait for the infection to take hold. In the present, Ellie finds a sewing needle and stitches Joel's wound. So the big difference is, is there was no mall in the game. I mean, she did, there is a mall, but it's not the same mall that we see in the show. It's just she goes there looking for supplies. Yeah, and then I guess the other difference is you know they um kind of dipped a little bit more into like ellie's time with fedra at the fedra academy 
Um, Mm -hmm. and you know, her being reprimanded for attacking other students and all that stuff. They kind of just delve a little deeper into that. Um, but the game does include the sequence where Riley confronts Ellie in their dorm room. So that, that part's the the same. Right. And, uh, they have to, and the, the fact that it's not a, a, um, single infected, it's an entire horde. In the show, in the game, it's an entire horde, and whereas in the show, it's just the one. Ah, okay. Yeah, that that's a that's a big difference. Which I would think it would be make oh. more sense that it would be a horde instead of one infected, but. Well, I think there's probably more infected in the mall. It's just that only one found them. <laughs> only one uh, one found them at the time. Yeah. I think. So, I. Well, but it's it's cheaper to I do mean, it with one instead of a bunch. Cheaper. So. And easier, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, also realistically, you're you're expecting two teen, young teenage girls to fight off a horde by themselves with like what? Well, in the game, they literally run away. They have to run away. <laughs> well, true, but still, you know. Yeah. So that's why it's probably easier just to have the one against them, and it's but it also shows how dangerous just a single infected uh, host can be. Yeah, so it it does show that too. Um, then we get into episode eight. It's called "When We Are in When When We Are in Need." Ellie leaves Joel, who is still recovering, to hunt for food. After shooting a deer, she tracks the wounded animal and encounters a preacher, David, and his fellow hunter, James. She trades her deer for penicillin. David reveals the man who stabbed Joel was a member of his group. Ellie leaves to treat Joel. The next day, she discovers David and his men have followed her to seek vengeance on Joel. She flees to draw them away, but is captured. At David's camp, he reveals that he has been feeding his group human flesh. Meanwhile, Joel awakens and tortures some of David's men into telling him Ellie's whereabouts. David and James attempt to kill Ellie, but she kills James and escapes. David hunts her down and tries to rape her, but she kills him with a meat cleaver. Joel finds a traumatized Ellie outside the cult's burning community center and comforts her. Uh, Jesus. Yeah, this one was a really, this this one was a big, this was a big episode. Because a lot of really heavy things happened yeah. in this episode. In the, in the game, we see it's, um, we see that Ellie kills a bunny. In the show, she can't kill the bunny. I don't know. So instead of trying to kill a bunny... She tries to kill a deer and she wounds the deer. You can just, yeah. I'm like, kill the bunny. David was a big one in this one. He was a big one in the, he was a, he was a major part of the games, but we still see more of him in the show than we do do in the games. The show presents him as more of a cult leader, religious cult leader, that he really wasn't that much in the game. I thought it was also interesting. Uh, James is played by Troy Baker, who was Joel in the game. Yeah, yeah, that was that was interesting. Oh, the bit of irony, Ellie and Ellie killing Joel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In the the in the game, they uh, Ellie and David bond over a fight when they fight off a pack of the infected. Uh before Ellie learns of who who David is. And in the show, that doesn't happen. In in the game, Joel pulls Ellie away from her attack on David. However, in the show, Ellie just kills him and finds finds Joel after. But I mean the the big ones, the the biggest things in this one were the fact that you learned that he's the only way he's feeding all of his people is by feeding them human flesh. He's basically he's basically cannibal. He's making everybody a cannibal in his little compound. That's creepy. Yeah. And that David would attempt to uh rape Ellie. That's just like, damn dude. It's like, come on now. At least at least Ellie got away. But it, yeah. it really it really messes with her psych- psychologically and you and you can tell it does. You know it does. And then episode nine, last episode, look for the light. And this one starts with a flash in a, with a flashback. In a flashback, Ellie's mother Anna is bit is bitten by an infected as she gives birth to Ellie. She's found by Marlene, who hesitantly takes Ellie and kills Anna at the latter's request. In the present day, 
Joel tells Ellie of his suicide attempt after Sarah's death. Firefly soldiers capture Ellie and knock Joel unconscious. After Joel awakens in a hospital, Marlene explains that the doctors are preparing Ellie for surgery in hopes of developing a cure. And Joel protests when he realizes the procedure will kill her. Marlene orders Joel to be taken away. He escapes and kills several Firefly soldiers, including those who surrender, and kills Ellie's sur surgeon for resisting. Joel carries an unconscious Ellie from the hospital. Marlene inter intercepts them stating there is still time to find a cure, but Joel shoots and kills her. When Ellie awakens, Joel lies and tells her the Fireflies had already failed to develop a cure from other immune people. As they hike to Jackson, Ellie insists that Joel swear his story about the Fireflies is true. When he does so, she replies, okay. So this one was a big one. Yeah. Because we learn, the big thing is we learn exactly how Ellie became immune and that she is literally the only person that is immune. But she doesn't realize she's the only person that's immune to it. Because her mother was bitten right before she gives birth. So it actually, the cordyceps actually grew inside Ellie, but she's not affected by it. She is the chosen one. It's a really interesting concept, the explanation as to how she's not, mm -hmm. you know, infected, like, in a meaningful way, I guess you could say. Yeah. And it's not... See, they never really tell you how in the game that she becomes immune. But it's really kind of interesting that the show was able to expand on it. I mean, I suppose in the game, it's a bit of a MacGuffin as to how she's immune. The more important thing is the fact that she apparently is. So she's the thing that, you know, drives the you know, oh, we must get Ellie because she is our best chance for a cure or vaccine, whatever. I thought it was yeah. interesting that they did a bit of a uh, video game cameo casting again by having the actress who plays Ellie in the game be Ellie's mom. Yeah. That was interesting. Also, they had a bit of, they had this whole scene with the giraffe. Yeah, that was that was kind of nice. That was really cute. It is amazing how the animals more or less survive. And it's the humans that are like, get wrecked. Yeah, well, animals will always survive us. I swear. It was a good, it was a good show. And I, I like the way it's going to set up for season two. Because we see things that happened at the very end of season one. That are directly that will directly impact season two and what happens with season two. So that'll be interesting to see. Obviously I'm not going to tell any spoilers. I mean, if you've played the games, you know what I'm talking about, but there's just characters that will find that'll be making an appearance in season two and things happen. Lots of things happen. It'll be interesting right. to see. It'll right. be interesting to see how they, um, how they do that. Yeah, it would. So I'm 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 looking forward to when they eventually bring out season two, hopefully within the next year or so, I would say. Yeah. I mean Is it, it I think it took them about a year to film the nine episodes that they did, so for season well, one. Well so. the issue is is gonna be did they even write start writing season two yet? Yeah, that's the real issue. Yeah. True. Because, like, House of the Dragon, um, it's not going to come out until next year. And that aired last year, so it's about two years, so, which is the thing. And not to mention, you have the writer strike happening right now. Um, so that's probably going to delay the production as well. But yeah, I mean, I would be eager to see what happens in season two. I mean, they left a lot of um, things, you know, open for exploration. Um, from my understanding, there's only like two games, right? Yeah, there's only two games. So I guess the question is going to be like, are they going to attempt to finish things off in a season two? Or are they going to try to expand it? and attempt to potentially make a season three. I mean, that'll be the thing I'm also curious about. 
Yeah, you know? I don't necessarily think they'll try to make a season three. I mean, if they could fit everything for the first game into season one, they should be able to do it again for season two. So, I mean, they could, but I don't see it happening. Well, I mean, obviously, without spoiling it for anybody who doesn't want to be spoiled for, you know, from the game, like, did the game actually give you like a real ending ending or is it one of those like open ending endings if you will to be perfectly honest with you i don't remember i I, i'll be perfectly honest it's been a while since i played the games Mm, okay i I I so i i'd have to actually look it up yeah because that because that's the that's just the thing i'm kind of curious about is because if it's one of those uh, stories where it has like a really open ending to it or there's no super settled resolution that potentially leaves the door open for them to start exploring more stuff in this world if you will I mean I'm not saying they definitely will I'm just saying you know for in in most other adaptations that's what could happen um but if they are mostly sticking with you know this is what happened in the game like these are all the main points plot points events then you're right they may just stick with a season two and then that's that did you like what you heard on our episode today well then feel free to come back and listen to us again You can find us on all different streaming sites, including Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Deezer, iHeartRadio, Spotify, you name it, we're there. And if you really like us, feel free to follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Three Fates Decide. That's T-H-R-E-E Fates Decide. You can also email us at threefatesdecide at gmail.com. And check out our website at threefatesdecide.com to find other episodes, information about your three hosts, and all of our other links. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time on Three Fates Decide.